In this video, we're going to go ahead and look at some disturbing videos, strange and odd news stories, and as always, we're going to go ahead and get right into today's video. In this first disturbing video, what is currently going on in the skies? Now, people in multiple locations like Florida, North Carolina, and so forth have been reporting red skies. So red that it's actually turning their entire neighborhoods red. Now, I'm from Florida myself, and I can contest about a couple days ago, I went outside around 4.30 in the morning, and the sky was also unusually red. Now, what's rather interesting, these locations that have these red skies are also places that were hit with things like Hurricane Milton, Hurricane Helene, and also very historic rainfall and floods. So we can never take harp off the table, weather manipulation, weather modification, but Spain takes the cake when it comes to very unusual skies. And this was captured yesterday by multiple people. And you have to remember, Spain was one of those locations that was hit very hard with floods and historic rainfall. Este es el cielo ahora mismo aquí en Paiporta. Nunca había visto yo un cielo igual a Nunca. Me da miedito, vamos, parece de película. Fin del mundo. Pero mira que no, que estoy... Joder, tu vida, tú. Qué movida más rara, ¿eh? It is definitely horrifying to see the skies like this over in Spain because like I said, Spain was one of those locations that had faced very horrific rainfall, historic rainfall and horrifying floods. And so this could be the end result of them manipulating the weather, manipulating the skies, or perhaps they are manipulating the weather again. While people are witnessing these very bizarre skies over in Spain, the very same day over in Washington, well, they are facing a bomb cyclone, and this is what it looks like. Oh my God! Holy shit! Personally, I've never heard of a bomb cyclone before and a lot of other people in the comment sections of these videos are asking what a bomb cyclone is, but apparently people in Washington and those surrounding states are familiar with this type of weather. They are familiar with what's known as a bomb cyclone. This next video comes from Conscious Juice on TikTok. Y'all seen what the bomb cyclone did to Seattle, Washington? Check this out. This is what it did. Trees, debris everywhere. Falling on top of cars, on top of buildings, high wind, high rain, right? But no flooding. But this is what took place. Wow. 
Look at that. Wow. This was literally the theme, y'all. The theme of this cyclone was literally to drop trees on top of cars, houses, you know, plane, trains, and automobiles, literally. Look at this. And then this is what it did to California. Heavy snow, y'all. Look at this. The animals are literally all covered up in snow. Are you kidding me? This was all last night? Oh my goodness. So rain, wind, water in Oregon and this and snow in California. Look at this, y'all. This is the next day. Look at this. That's crazy, y'all. And then you can't forget the red sky in Florida. That that right here is amazing. There's a lot going on around the world, y'all. All at once, I told y'all. But yeah, I be telling y'all, the shift is here. Let's continue to get it. Peace out. In this next disturbing video, I can't help but feel that somebody or somebodies have been messing with our food supply. Whether it is lunch meat, different types of vegetables, like onions, green onions, and so forth, we keep hearing massive recalls of different food products. Well, yesterday or two days ago, there was a massive recall of ground beef. Not 16,000 pounds, not 60,000 pounds, but over 160,000 pounds of ground beef was recalled due to a nasty strain of E. coli, with multiple people actually losing their lives. E. coli now, more than 160,000 pounds of fresh and frozen ground beef products shipped to restaurants nationwide are now being recalled due to a potential contamination, and it's the same strain linked to the E. coli scare at McDonald's. This latest recall. Important information for consumers about their food safety. We're talking about 165,000 pounds of ground beef, 15 cases in Minnesota, and investigators there linked it back to a distributor um, in Detroit. Symptoms began between uh, November 2nd and the 10th, and this is the same strain linked to that McDonald's onion case. Wolverine Packing is the name of the company that distributed this meat, and this is what they say. This meat was sent mostly to restaurants, we think, so the concern among food safety Safety officials, is it could still be in freezers. Yeah, I was going to say, or even, I mean, people freeze their, their meat, you know, Absolutely. you get a good price, you freeze it. That's according to the USDA. And this is about 100 uh, plus fresh and frozen ground beef products. We're talking brands like 1855 Beef. This is just a theory. And again, for YouTube purposes only, this video is for entertainment. But I can't help but feel the closer we get to the 2030 agenda, we're going to keep hearing more stories like this because they really want to push fake meat. They want to push lab-grown fruits and vegetables. So, of course, anything that is natural or anything that comes from animals will now be deemed unhealthy or it'll make you sick or you could pass away from eating it. We're going to hear more and more about E. coli outbreaks linked to meat and other food products, other diseases. The powers that be, they're going to go ahead and say that, well, you can turn to lab-grown meat where you don't have to deal with E. coli and other outbreaks, and it's healthier for the environment. So we're going to start doing away with farm life, farm animals, and now introduce you to lab-grown meat, fake meat, fake vegetables, fake fruits. This will be the norm and the standard until, like I said, it's the only food products available, food grown in a lab. In this next disturbing video, it would seem like Norwegian Cruise Lines canceled five months of cruises on three separate ships. Now, I do wonder if other cruise lines will be following suit. Do they know of something that is coming, something big that's coming? And it's kind of funny. This is all happening around the same time that we are hearing that something may be in the waters. We are hearing that there could possibly be UFOs and aliens in the waters, or this could do with a major conflict between all these countries and a lot of these big CEOs, especially a Norwegian Cruise Line CEO, may know of something that's coming down the line and while well, he's canceling these cruises. So this is article. Norwegian Cruise Lines just canceled around five months of cruises on three separate ships. Hmm. So the cruise line said the reasoning was because of fleet redeployment. Not making sense. They went on to say, occasionally scheduled itineraries may need to be canceled, allowing us the opportunity to introduce enhanced voyages that accommodate strong guest demand and provide a more immersive experience. How about we take a look at where these boats were going? So the first one, Norwegian Jewel, was supposed to go to the Bahamas and the Caribbean. Canceled. Now this one I found interesting. 
For the Norwegian Star, cancellations include the ship's full season in South America and Antarctica. As for the Norwegian Dawn, that cruise was set to go around Africa and then Asia and then visit ports in Southeast Asia, Indian Ocean, Middle East, and more. Are you guys getting the picture yet? So if you didn't already know, Norwegian cruises are one of the only cruises that does international cruises. Carnival, Disney, they don't do that. They stay within the Caribbean. What's going on right now, people? Are some big time countries not getting along? And maybe they don't want people out in international waters because of some conflicts that are happening right now? I mean, this is all alleged, what do I know? But I mean, connect the dots, people. This is making me a little uneasy. So this is article Norwegian. Now I do know that other cruise lines from the United States do go internationally, including Royal Caribbean that uses the serenade of the seas to offer a world cruise. But I don't know if they go to these places specifically, and maybe it's only Norwegian that goes to these places, but it will be rather interesting to see if other cruise lines start to cancel certain cruises in this next disturbing video. Does anybody remember when I used to talk about the, blob in Antarctica. Well, time and time again, I do look on different weather applications to see if I can see anything. And so far, nothing has appeared in that location. Then to Sky, the weather application that this glitch was seen on, they came out and said, don't worry about it. It's just a glitch, bro. Well, this channel here and other channels discovered that this anomaly was actually seen on other weather radars. Matter of fact, it was seen years ago as well. This individual on TikTok, she goes by Keela. She has a rather interesting look when it comes to the blob in Antarctica. Do you remember the blob anomaly? It showed up earlier this year in April on an app that measures how big waves are in the ocean. It started off pretty small, but by the time it made it to the southern tip of Africa, it was this size. Was it headed to a UFO base that's located in Africa? Well, let's talk about it. So in 1987, the CIA conducted a remote viewing session of extraterrestrial bases throughout the entire solar system. So we know where the Titan base is. We know where Mount Hayes is. It's this last one that's a little fuzzy, the South America slash Africa base. And you can see that he describes meeting two different entities inside of this base. The first one didn't recognize him, but the second one did pick up on his presence. Now jump forward in the document to where he is describing what he sees while he's at this physical base. That is Africa. I know it's labeled South America, but look at the drawing. That, that's fucking Africa. So I started digging into UFO sightings in Africa because we have the blob headed towards Africa. We have this drawing of Africa, I'm sure of it. And we have the base up top labeled Africa. And wouldn't you know it, back in 1952, the CIA had a document about two UFOs being spotted in the Congo. Look, they were near uranium mines. This is the area of the Congo that those UFOs were spotted in. And it's right next door to Zimbabwe, which had a mass sighting of UFOs in 1994. Let me know if you want to hear about that. So was that blob anomaly headed towards a UFO base in Africa? I mean, we have the remote viewer putting a UFO base in Africa. We have the mass sighting in Zimbabwe. And then we have the two saucers that were spotted over the uranium mines right there. And yes, I know this is not exactly where the remote viewer drew the X on the map. And again, I know that he wrote South America and not Africa. But I feel in my gut, there's a UFO base in Africa. Me personally, and those that have been subscribed to this channel for quite some time now, you will know I've done a ton of deep diving when it came to this anomaly in Antarctica. And I do believe all roads lead to weather manipulation and harp. I don't think it has anything to do with UFOs and aliens. In one of my final videos that had to do with the anomaly, I drew some pretty big connections that went right back to harp. But it's still very nice to see that multiple people are still talking about the anomaly, bringing up some theories and actually having some interesting information to go along with it. This next video comes from Glamham 2.0 on TikTok. Again, she is a friend of the channel and you can actually subscribe to her on YouTube under Glamham Radio. Now, what's rather interesting in this video, not only is she going to talk about these strange green lights in the sky, but she's also going to mention how there's chemicals in the waters that are dissolving people's boots. And remember, I made a video about a couple of weeks ago where residents in North Carolina, they were saying how their shoes were actually being dissolved after they stepped in the waters. This was after Hurricane Helene. It's Glamham. What do strange green lights in the sky that are seen places like New River Valley and Cape Corral, Florida have to do with nail polish? 
Hold that thought. During Hurricane Helene, 13 containers with potential hazardous chemicals were swept away from the Radford Army Ammunition Plant. But it wasn't until November 7th, nearly six weeks later, they let the community know about it. What was in those containers? Well, enough to make Walter White proud. For starters, £127,500 of calcium sulfate wastewater and up to 700 gallons of diesel. But that's not all. Over 3,500 gallons of DBP, dibutyl phthalate. And that's where we get to the nail polish. By the way, there were 13 containers of DBP. There's still nine to be found. Remember how people's boots were dissolving in Hurricane Helene? Well, it turns out that a combination of these, combined with the polyvinyl chloride that also leaked into the floodwaters, is pretty much enough to dissolve your boots. You may want to look up the side effects of DBP that is in nail polish because it's pretty nasty. So back to the green lights seen over the New Valley River. The green lights are LIDAR and it could be that they're looking for those nine missing containers of DBP. It could also be they're looking for other things in the riverbed, such as pegmatite rock that's a source of certain minerals that are increasingly valuable and are going to be crucial for national security because of the very special needs of the U.S. military. There's some food for thought for you. I hope everyone is safe and we'll see you in the comments. Take care. this channel, I have spoken about Project Bluebeam quite often, the fall stage alien invasion. Well, one of the steps of Project Bluebeam is to have a holographic Jesus to deceive people. Well, currently, there is a AI Jesus over in Switzerland, and it's confusing some people. This next video comes from Moon Henry. This is so demonic, and I wish I was joking, but Switzerland made an AI, a fake Jesus, artificial intelligence Jesus, that is supposed to take your confessions. And I'm about to show it to you, but what the people are saying who's actually done the confession with the fake Jesus is actually scary. Two-thirds of the people who have done this so far are so deceived into thinking they had a spiritual experience. Well, technically it was spiritual, it's a demon. I know God's not happy, and further, it gave me so much advice. And the AI Jesus is literally answering questions of faith. I bet you it's advice is you can pray to me instead. Like all the other pagan gods said. Reminds me a lot of Revelation 13, they'll have power to give life unto the image of the beast. And also recently, Spaceman did that interview on AI saying that it'll make a new Bible and had a very mischievous laugh. That's where our new Bible come from. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Yeah, I wish that was funny. Yeah, okay, so I want to talk to you about a line. <laughs> that's in Memphis, actually. It's was, in Memphis? Yeah. Oh, so, so that's where you were? Yeah. I see. Memphis, okay. the capital of ancient Egypt. Right, right, pa right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 you're bringing what? But perhaps that's where our new God will come from. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Yeah, I wish that was funny. Yeah, yeah okay, so I want to talk to you about a line. That <laughs> I wish that was funny. Yeah, yeah I mean, right. Well, look. Talking about UFOs and aliens, it seems like people are convinced that something will happen on December 3rd. Now, I'm the type of individual that no longer likes to date drop, especially after what happened with the April 8th solar eclipse. When I made sure to say in each video that the world was not going to end and that the April 8th solar eclipse was one giant ritual for multiple organizations, well, when April 8th came and passed, I was getting multiple comments. My videos were flooded with comments saying, well, you see, the world didn't end. Delete your channel. I'm still alive and I blame you for that and so forth. Very, very wild. Well, it's happening again. And it's all thanks to Donald Trump being on the Joe Rogan podcast. This next video is from Josh at Polarity Media on TikTok. So this man called Cliff High developed a software program over 20 years ago that scanned the entire internet and analyzed thematic patterns and language that people were using all over the world to predict the future. 
Cliff High believed in our individual subconscious intuition, but he also believed in our interconnected consciousness that we all draw from whether we're aware of it or not. So using a technique that he called predictive linguistics, he wrote a program that was able to analyze all the keywords and phrases and thematic patterns and assign them an emotional value. It then uses a formula to gauge our emotional tensions and write a report on events that will happen in the future. Now these predictions all came with a precondition that Cliff called temporal markers. And that's kind of like a precursor event, like a trigger event that has to happen before the prediction will come true. So the prediction will not happen until or unless the temporal marker or the trigger event happens first. So what did this program predict? Way back in 2009, this is crazy, honestly. The software program reported of a battle in our skies that got chaotic and out of hand between military jets and UFOs, and also interestingly, UFOs against other UFOs. And this would mark the beginning of an era where non-human intelligence became a part of our everyday reality. And this was all to take place roughly 39 days after the trigger event happened, so after that temporal marker event. And that temporal marker event was Donald Trump being interviewed by Joe Rogan, which just happened the other day and is already the biggest podcast of all time. But let me explain why this is so wild. In 2009, when this prediction was made, Joe Rogan was far from being a household name like he is today. His podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, had its very first episode in December 2009. And back then, it was literally just Joe and a couple of his mates on their webcams in their lounge room. He had hosted Fear Factor, and he was the commentator for the UFC back then, but even then, the UFC was way smaller than what it is today. And Donald Trump being the president was not even in the conversation. In 2009, he was just a real estate mogul and the guy from The Apprentice. This kind of prediction back then was so far out of left field that it was hardly given any further thought by Cliff himself. And now, in 2024, President Donald Trump has just been on the Joe Rogan Experience, the biggest podcast in the world. And at the same time, we have so many military whistleblowers, Harvard lawyers, Stanford scientists, all coming out and saying UFOs and non-human intelligence are very real and that we, the public, need to be made aware of this before it's potentially catastrophically forced upon us. The world is so crazy right now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like, as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.